What is going on guys? Politics Gaming here and today we are doing the next episode of the United States of America. Today we are basically going to develop our oil and natural gas industry to make sure that the United States is de not dependent on other countries and we're going to possibly also cancel most of our oil contracts that we possibly already have. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and we're going to see what kind of oil and natural gas contracts we are at we actually already have going on. So one of them right now is the San Antonio Agreement with with the United States of Mexico, this is the San Antonio Agreement, about $12 billion, 21 million tow of worth of oil actually coming in from the United States of Mexico. So one thing we're actually going to do, we're possibly going to cancel that contract as soon as we actually get a handle on our oil industry. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to develop the living hell out of our entire oil industry, especially our shale industry so what we're gonna go ahead and do we're gonna go ahead and do this and we're probably gonna actually skip a little bit because you're actually gonna just literally see me just building all of this so I'm just gonna do that for you guys just so you're not uh, just you know sitting here watching everything so a lot of the oil industry and one of the mysteries of this game actually is where most of the oil actually is and I've actually emailed Eversim a couple of times about this, but one of the things that I really, really want to figure out is developing a map of this oil field, of the at least the United States, at least a couple other countries that they actually are able to, um, the, one of the, some of the most important countries since they actually have some oil. There's a lot of oil right up here in Russia. Uh, the United Kingdom, there's a lot of oil right over here, right in the North Sea. Um, that is just waiting to be exploited and a lot there's a lot of oil that the United States actually has on tap so what we're gonna do would we're, we're literally just going to develop that entire industry and we're probably poss possibly actually just gonna develop at least maybe two or three dozen different facilities just exploiting as much oil as we possibly can and we're not really gonna develop all of the oil because there's still so much oil that we actually still would be able to develop but we're just literally just going to develop a couple of states with at least one or two dozen uh different oil facilities And we are back. Basically, I just developed a lot. And whenever I say a lot, I basically do mean a lot. Uh, I developed 10 new shale oil wells and I developed about 37 different gas wells all over the United States. We have a current, literally, all of this. This is literally going to be probably at least 0.1 million tow. It's going to be a lot of 
oil and natural gas we're going to be able to develop in about 40 days and it's going to only going to take 40 days for that actually to be developed and uh i don't think we actually need to change the tax situation just to pay for it uh we may or may not have to increase taxes in this episode however this is going to be the response to it no riots across the united states we have a lot of people people really didn't like the environmental effects of this but basically we are uh pretty good on energy independence energy and in public finance because they were not that expensive to actually build the most expensive uh, oil platform is literally by building the oil platforms that you have to build out at sea those usually cost almost a billion dollars and then you go over to here these are only a couple million dollars a pop like what 12 million dollars and then go over to gas wells and that drops down to about nine million dollars nine and a half million dollars actually uh, so one of the difficulties actually that I was really having is I was literally trying to just look all over the United States. Usually I kind of was uh, just kind of like staying around the central region, around the Mississippi River. And what I actually found is there is a lot of oil actually around this area. If you really follow the Mississippi River from around Louisiana, Mississippi, all the way up toward and it's right here because of the a lot of state borders actually border the Mississippi so it goes all the way up to Minnesota so if you actually follow it down from at least Iowa to Missouri down all the way into Arkansas uh, Illinois Kentucky Tennessee Mississippi and Louisiana there is a lot of oil in this little area right here around Mississippi River a couple other areas are around New York this northern region right here which would be interesting uh, again, right here would be one of the biggest things that uh, there was a lot of oil that I actually had. A lot of oil around this area right here, if you actually kind of do a little bit more in-depth analysis, there's a lot of oil definitely in Texas, around this area right here in Oklahoma. There's not a lot in Kansas, even though there's not li literally nothing in Kansas. Uh, Nebraska doesn't have that much. A lot of the oil kind of also is concentrated around North and South Dakota. Montana, Northern Montana, that's where it is. Around Central and Western or Eastern Wyoming right here. Colorado, it's actually spread pretty thinly and thoroughly across the state of Colorado. There's a couple right here in the Central Valley of California that is actually pretty exploitable. I have a couple of facilities under construction. There's like one, two, two gas wells actually under construction in the state of California. Um, Mexico, I really don't know. There's a little bit more oil right here in this area if you really wanted to build some oil platforms. Not really that much in Florida, I believe. Uh, really, it's all just really centered around this, this like whole plain right here. A little bit up here too. Anyway, let's go ahead and go to the completion of these facilities. I know the United States is very, very excited to see uh, our own energy independence. And since we are actually going to be able to meet most of that independence, we're actually going to go ahead and cancel the San Antonio Agreement. This is this is a uh, provided to us to expire to in 2024 so we're going to go ahead and, ex and uh, suppress the contract just because we are going to be able to meet our own needs very very soon mexico will not like that and it will probably hurt our trade rela relations but i kind of don't care because mostly i'm just trying to meet my own uh because mostly I'm just trying to meet my own independence, and so that's really my goal in this episode. So we're going to go ahead and keep c continue on. Uh, space research. What are we doing over here? Um, Mars 1. They want to reach Mars, put a satellite around Mars by 2028. We could probably actually help them out, but the Russians are charging them $3 million just to do so. Um, I mean, I could participate and then help them with it. Mars SG-001. I feel like if I actually helped them out, then they would probably just cancel it. China discovers fiber optics. That's awesome. So that means that we are about to discover fiber optics. And we just got two aircraft carriers delivered to us. That's awesome. Our aircraft carriers were delivered on time and they are amazing. The maneuvers and all preliminary tests were perfectly conclusive. The little jewels have already returned to their harbors. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We can already take advantage of our new aircraft carriers, our little new little toys 
that we can actually take advantage of. And since we have completed those, we're going to go ahead and ask for two more of them. Actually, we're probably going to ask for three. $15 billion is going to be done by 2024, before Election Day, actually, so that would be cool. What if I actually do one? I'll get all of them. If I actually negotiate this one at a time, I'll get all of them by 2022. Um, hmm. Maybe I can actually just wait a little bit and then just go off some tanks. Volume already under contract. See, they actually fixed the weapon system in fourth generation warfare, so it's actually really kind of funny because, I mean, it's impossible to want to order like, what, 4,000 tanks for a massive military buildup because that's possible in other games, but in Power and Revolution, it's going to take me until 2052 to order all of that in bulk and it's going to cost about $20 billion with interest. Like, so, it, I mean, I wish they would actually fix that, since they actually did that in fourth generation warfare. It wouldn't make sense that they didn't do it in Power and Revolution. I think they're more concentrated on just trying to make sure that the econ economic system uh, that they are about to implement. Because I think basically what we're about to get is a brand new economic system in this next game. So that's going to be that's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, that be put into effect. So since we are doing some energy independence, we're actually going to move for a little bit more energy independence. We're going to go ahead and build a third generation nuclear power plant in northern Michigan, actually. We could possibly dismantle three more nuclear power plants, but then we just need to make sure that we are able to suffice our needs and build up a little bit more electricity before we even think about dismantling our own apparatus. Build one in northern Georgia. It's going to cost at least maybe $250 billion. Uh, let's go ahead and build one in the northern valley of California. And let's go ahead and build one more. And let's use that to power eastern Washington. It's actually going to be south of Spokane. So that's going to be interesting. Our Spokane, Spokane. This organization. Let's go ahead and infiltrate that organization over in Georgia. All right, and while I was actually skipping forward to the completion of the oil facilities, basically my Minister of Education gave them, came to me, Mr. or Mrs. De Betsy DeVos. Basically, she told me that we have discovered the anti-AIDS vaccine. As she says, Mr. President, our laboratories have just perfected an effective treatment against the HIV virus. It consists of the injection of portions of genetic material of the virus into the organism, which that's actually a very uh, common way for scientists to actually fight disease. The lymphocytes then are stimulated by the production of viral proteins and the organism then can, then can protect itself efficiently. efficiently. The advantage of this vaccine is that it is possible to adapt, adapt it to any strain of HIV. We are the first ones to have made this discovery, which confers us on a huge scientific advantage. To use the desire to patent it and render, render it commercially accessible to the entire world. Uh, usually, I really don't like to patent things and make them commercially accessible. I like to keep my own secrets. But just because this is a massive vaccine it's a literally a vaccine that could help everyone i want to make that available to the world so we're going to go ahead and allow that to be patented by the federal government and we are going to move forward and we're going to sell it to other countries we're going to make it available to them
All right, and we are back. Basically, we are just about one day away from completing all of our facilities for our oil and natural gas it only takes 40 days for them to be completed and while we were doing that while we were skipping ahead i had a couple of things happen uh that i actually did not show you guys there was a couple of things basically our growth is actually kind of shooting down a little bit our economy is shrinking slightly we're not really worried about this because i'm not really worried about going into a recession however this also is showing that my trade balance is increasing a little bit we are importing a little bit more than we should be about 300 billion dollars worth more uh, compared to uh, the beginning of the game uh, so that's something we're definitely gonna be looking forward to in the next episode uh, I know there's gonna be a couple of things but we are now in we are now completed with the first 100 days of President Trump's office and now that we go to the 1st of May, we're going to go ahead and go over to our oil production. And we are going to see that we have increased our production of oil and shale gas. Looks like we are now producing 0.32 of oil and 0.05 worth of gas. Now let's go over and compare that to our actual oil production, oil and natural gas production. We are now 29, almost 30% of the world production, so we just need to increase our natural gas production a little bit more. And it's actually extremely possible to become very self-reliant on yourself if you are playing as the United States whenever it comes to natural gas. Oil is another story because it actually there's a little bit more that you need to do, but if you actually do invest in non-conventional oil and gas those things actually do contribute to your overall production so dudes do actually help relieve the uh strain of foreign oil that you are usually relying on whenever you whenever you were playing as the united states so that means you do not have to rely on saudi arabia or iraq or even iran to actually be able looks like iran actually has a hostage crisis going on right now Looks like that's like the 1970s all over again. But in any case, we are doing a we're in a much better position than we were about 10 years ago compared to the United States just in general. Uh, world stage, we are definitely kind of shrinking a little bit. China is increasing in influence and we are looking more toward things such as climate change and other things that are more of a threat to us than actually other countries. You know, Russia and China are increasing in influence, but that's only because of the past 20 years that the United States has been conducting its own foreign policy, has been basically at the forefront of the news ever since the turn of the millennium. So one of the things that we need to do is that we need to start countering this influence from China and Russia. And in terms of that, we may need to start actually influencing elections. We need to start gaining more allies than NATO itself because just relying on NATO is going to be pretty closed door policy. But if we actually start increasing our influence in countries in Southeast Asia, in South Asia, in the Middle East even, maybe even in Africa, which is becoming a very, very big uh, geopolitical card right now, basically, between the Chinese and the Russians and the Americans. So, if anything, if you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and if you guys want to see more of this, go ahead and just leave a like and leave a comment, Let, tell me what you think about this episode down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys there.